Hello, everyone, and welcome to Thursday Live Lesson. My name is Aldrin Guerrero, joined by my two colleagues, Mr. Aaron, the voice now commercial. What's up, Aaron? What's up? Oh, And Mr. Kahai, the legend for again. Say what's up, Kahai? What's up? Today, we have the legend, the one, the only, <laughs> the guy in the background for most of our videos, the unsung hero himself, Mr. Kaniho. Say what's up, Kaniho G. What's hey, up? aloha. So, uh, Kaniho <laughs> is here <laughs> joining us. And he's from the Fern Grotto. From, from the Fern Grotto. <laughs> it's a nice day out here, guys. Nice All the day. way from Wailua. He's just he's <laughs> social distancing to the max. <laughs> it's my backyard. Yeah, it is. Yeah, technically, right? It is. Yeah. You've been working at the Lois and stuff. You want yeah, yeah. Decide, no, okay, wanted okay. to take a nice, uh, <laughs> nice dip in the pool in your Fern Grotto, you know? Uh, After you just do, got done stand up paddling, <laughs> <laughs> checking out my fish traps for the day. <laughs> right now, so Kanio is here. He's going to be uh, helping us out with some questions. He uh, he is and has been featured heavily in, uh, in a lot of our videos on playing bass, playing guitar, playing whatever else we asked. He, he even sang, you know, on, on a couple songs. So uh, he's here to to lend his uh, his expert ear and his expert advice. On whatever questions you guys may have. So how Thursday Live Lesson works is you guys ask us any any and all questions. And uh, I try to answer them as best as I can. And my three colleagues are going to be uh, putting in their two cents, coming up with a super answer just for you guys. We are live. So uh, there's a live chat going on. Ch uh, hit us up with whatever questions you guys may have. Kanijo is an, uh, is an expert bass player and guitar player. So if you guys have any bass questions, guitar questions, he'll be ready to answer them for you. Um, and uh, yeah, let's 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 get going. And we, we also have questions from uh, from emails, from uh, from voicemails, from our uh, from our telephone number, you know. And we have an uh, we have a, an unboxing today, so we have we're very oh, nice. it's a very yeah. busy day today, yeah. So here we go. Let's get started. Kahai, give me the first question. Uh, yeah. Oh, well, maybe before we do the first question, do you wanna exp do you wanna say how you know Kaniho and how long you've oh. known Kaniho for? For the people who don't know, um, I know Kaniho um, through uh, through high school. We we went to high school and actually like intermediate, intermediate, like yeah. intermediate school, uh, yeah. which is like middle school for you know for for you folks. Um, we've yeah we've met kind of playing music, playing video games actually, <laughs> and then uh, music kind of came along. We started um, playing ukulele together, and um, we we were in uh, we were in bands together. We were in chorus together. We uh, he was. You know, he was part of my wedding. <laughs> he was, oh, uh, man. We're, we've been basically been best <laughs> friends for like for ages, for decades. You know, like yeah. it's been it's been an insane ride. But Kanio has been there pretty much every step of the way and knows me better than any musician does. Like he's he's kind of known me from day one, and he knows uh, and he some of the hardships that I've gone through. Like he's gone through the same you know same thing, kind of really honing his craft. So he is now a master bass player. He he plays yeah. bass for everyone on the island. Like. No one just wants to play bass for some reason. <laughs> so Kanil plays bass for everyone. Like, I mean, who are, who are name some of the big names that you played bass for? Because I know you've played for some big names. Big names? Yeah. Uh, we're we're talking like you've you've got you play bass for like American Idol like contestants and stuff, right? <laughs> Right, Velasco, like she was. A, oh, yeah, that's right. right. Oh, there you go. I, See, I know, I know, Kanilo's history a little bit better than he does, maybe. I just, you know, <laughs> so what? name some of the famous people you true. play for. I, I, I guess. I mean, if we're talking Hawaii famous, then yeah, like Camilo Velasco. I backed up. Uh, who's that Kolohe Kai dude? I did one for him on a yeah. on a random. Um, I just been lucky, bro. Roman? Honestly, yeah, yeah, yeah Roman. Roman, yeah, Roman. And you also I, did uh, for the people P Pickers guy. You also uh, oh, that's play, play right. Bass. Yeah, dude, you you played bass for some some great artists. <sighs> well, you're the only one that matters, though, man. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> uh, shucks. No, man. I've been, you know, but most of my exciting stuff has been playing for you, man. Yeah, and also um, for those people who attended the Ukula Underground retreats, uh, Kaniko. And um, and Kahea actually uh, gave us a nice lesson on uh, on Hawaiian language and uh, and Hawaiian culture. So he was there participating in that as well and kind of lending their expertise in not just music but in Hawaiiana. 
<laughs> together, right? Uh, shout out to the boys. Thank you guys for having us. But yes, yeah, yeah. Hawaiiana. So yes, he's... you're right. So if you guys have any like Hawaiian questions too, like Kanihu would be you know able to uh, answer them as well. He's uh, he's a uh, native Hawaiian speaker. You know, I'll try my best, man. I'll try my best. So he's a wealth of knowledge. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he was also um he was also featured in Aloha Oi, which is one of our most popular videos on YouTube. Millions of views. Yeah. Millions. I look so angry though in that video. <laughs> <laughs> You're concentrating. Yeah. <laughs> those those chords are hard, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> he was, he was that strumming was hard. Yeah. yeah. Also, so fun fact, he played um uh that it is a baritone ukulele that he played, which is he played just that day. He's never played a baritone ukulele in his life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I told him like, well, you're gonna have to play this then. <laughs> if you can play this, that'd be great. Oh, man, yeah, so, thank you. I love you guys. Man. He's thank always up for so the, whatever challenge we throw at him. He's always up for it. He uh, recently he did uh, the song "Something" by the Beatles, and oh, if man. you guys listen closely to that bassline, it is not an easy bassline. <laughs> Oh yeah, man, don't yeah. put me on the spot. Now I'm gonna get a bunch He's... of hate mail. Like, bro, you didn't do it justice. <laughs> you, you sure did. <laughs> oh, You've already yeah, gotten those emails, and it was for the singer. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> oh, but man, all right, that was good... uh, so that's that's our intro for Mr. Kaniho G. Uh, <laughs> give us our first question. Yeah. Uh, so the other week, like it was uh, a couple people sent in um, where they said that. They didn't get hurt from playing the ukulele, but they they were exercising or doing something, and so they got tennis elbow in their their uh, fretting hand, and it, playing the ukulele kind of exasperates it. So they're wondering if mm. there's any like stretches or any warm ups they could do to help alleviate it. And then what do you do uh, since they have it? Like what do they what should they do with playing the ukulele? Like should they just put it down and wait for it to go away or you know, like what should be the approach to that? <laughs> okay, well, um, with, with any problems like this, the first thing that I tell people is really to con you consult your your uh, primary care provider. <laughs> you know, like uh, go go check out your doctor and tell them that you have like you know you have some kind of pain. If you're really um, uh, concerned about it and and you feel like it's it's going to get worse or if it's just something that that'll pass, that's something that you talk to with your doctors like right away. You know, like instead of like uh, I, and and these random guys from the internet are definitely going to give you our uh, you know our take on it but for the most part go see uh, go talk to your doctor and that'll be the best person to talk to about this now with that said um there there might be a few things that are causing you know this this pain and i can kind of give some pointers into um proper properly holding your ukulele so that you don't um make it any worse so you don't aggravate it or anything because it, it now that you have it you know it, it can be aggravated if you're uh taking the same kind of steps as you're taking now so First off, um, if it's your fretting hand, and I'm going to assume your right, uh, your right arm or hand is going to be all good. But if it's not, just as a quick rundown, we usually tell people to uh, take your pointer finger and point to uh, where the, the neck meets the body right here. This is where you want to strum. This is kind of the, um, the, the sweet spot to strumming. And then you just take your, uh, take your forearm and you want to just like relax and just lay it down on the uh, lower bout of your ukulele and the top part, lower bout right here. So my uh, my elbow is not is not sticking out. It's not up here or anything like that. It's just nice and relaxed on the side. It's not here uh, in the middle on the side. It's up here, nice and relaxed, and my elbow is just kind of um, hanging out, you know. So I'm using kind of the comfort of the lower bout here to kind of rest my forearm and that, therefore resting that that elbow as well. Okay. Now for your uh, for your left hand, it's a little bit tougher because you, you can't really rest that elbow on anything. But for the most part, it's it's about kind of relaxing your uh, your your forearm and relaxing your, uh, your your hand. So and your wrist also. A lot of people kind of play their uh, play their guitars or ukuleles and don't pay attention to where their wrists are. And their wrist can sometimes be uh, kind of like this or or like that or kind of bent up this way. You want to make sure that your wrist is nice, straight, and relaxed. Okay. If I'm playing whatever chord that I may be, you know, I may be playing, it's not going to be this uh, this crazy stretch here or a straight crazy stretch up here as well. So with that said, if this is nice and relaxed, then there shouldn't really be too much tension here. And you, you want to keep this as close to your body as, uh, as possible. If this is, um, oh, sorry. Uh, you want this as close to your body as possible. If this, uh, if this elbow kind of goes out, you want to bring that, uh, that elbow in, okay? 
so that it's uh it's kind of laying nice and just kind of relaxed here on your side and if it kind of jolts out here or, uh if even if without your ukulele if you just kind of put your arm out like this and then stretch it out this way you're gonna feel that this elbow is is going to be engaged yeah so you're engaging this elbow and you're you're adding a little bit of stress to it and it's not it might not be much if you're just kind of you know if you're just doing it just now but imagine if you're playing for like two three four hours like how some people do and that's enough to kind of aggravate any kind of uh any kind of injury plus i don't know what it is that you do in you know in in your normal life you might have done something that you know that can cause it as well and that's just going to aggravate it even more so just make sure that your uh, that your your elbow and your arm itself is kind of tucked in uh nice and relaxed and this your wrist is nice and relaxed as well okay so as long as you're you're in this uh relaxed position nothing is tensed up it should uh it should be a lot better for your elbow uh, as far as stretches I don't know about uh, stretches. Maybe, maybe Aaron, the more physical guy in this group, like might be able to lend some uh, expertise. But for the most part, I just kind of like, uh, like stretch out my my whole arm. Like before, you know, before I play, I just kind of like stretch it out like that. Go back in, and then, you know, like same thing as if you were to just kind of loosen up your wrist. You want to just like loosen up the arm, you loosen up, you know, loosen up the elbow, and then start playing. Um, if it really hurts, um, and you know, you, but you still want to play, see if you can kind of get a, a chair with uh, with some arms, and you can use the arms to kind of rest your uh, your your elbows on top, and that should alleviate some of the pressure that's on your elbow. But to reiterate, like first thing I do is is maybe talk to some uh, somebody if uh, if you feel like it's it's a concern, if it's you know if you feel like it's a concern, so talk to your doctor saying, hey, I was playing my ukulele and my elbow started like hurting, you know, for some reason. Is that is that normal? <laughs> you know, uh, but uh, yeah. So these are some things that you can that you can try to do and see if you can um you know uh, alleviate some of that pain. So uh, what do you guys think? Yeah, yeah, and, and I, I think um I I like like you said like we're not like medical people so we can only yeah. just say like you know kind of basic stuff but mm -hmm. uh what i heard is like what can kind of exasperate it or cause that too is when your wrist is bent because your wrist is bending mm -hmm. the tendons in your forearm get tight mm -hmm. and they rub against the the other or they rub against <clears throat> each other and the bone and that's what like causes even more strain in your forearm so like if Makes you're sense. feeling that like yeah like you want you, you don't even think that that's what's going to be causing it, but everything, your whole arm is kind of one whole unit. So you want to make sure that it's all in the right place and you're not stressing out one part more without realizing that you're causing something else more problems, you know? So, yeah, yeah. just, like, try to play comfortably. Like, it shouldn't feel like any part of you is mm -hmm. bent mm -hmm. at a weird angle or, you know, you're doing anything weird. Yeah. Yeah. Eric? <laughs> <laughs> I was just gonna say, um, just to just to back back on what you guys are talking about. Uh, rest is always best for me. Like if something's mm -hmm. sore, don't you know? Don't yeah. make it more sore. Um, mm -hmm. And like everybody was talking about being comfortable. Also, maybe even um, how hard you grip your cords. You know, like that. And it, well, like Kahai <laughs> was saying, if your hand is bent at a weird angle and you're gripping your your neck real hard that might actually help uh you know irritate that area as well so it's just something to think about so make sure you're comfortable all around even when you're holding your cords yeah you know great good answer already already well well worth what we paid him <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, yeah yeah definitely um we always kind of say that it shouldn't be hurting. You know, you're mm -hmm. playing ukulele. It shouldn't, shouldn't be something that's hurting you. So if it is, then um, you might have to adjust something and um, and definitely talk to your doctor if it is really hurting you. So, yeah. 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 Good. Uh, do you have any stretching exercises? <laughs> I don't stretch. For elbow? We know this. <laughs> yeah. I know. I, was uh, I don't know. Yeah, he said it was his elbow, right? Yeah, yeah. his yeah. fretting that was hurting. Fretting arm, yeah. Fretting arm, elbow. elbow. I don't know. I, I can't imagine anything like doing anything on ukulele that would really aggravate that. I mean, other than hold it wrong, yeah. Yeah, people say like tennis elbow and stuff, but that yeah. makes more sense because you're swinging a racket, <laughs> but you're not swinging your ukulele at all. Yeah. So, so yeah, I can't. 
I can't really imagine. And there, there actually aren't too many stretches for your elbow. Mm. It's more like if you're putting pressure or strain on like, you know, if you're, if you're holding weight, if there's mm. weight or you're doing like pulls, that's usually when your elbow gets kind of aggravated. But yeah, you shouldn't be with your ukulele. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think the easiest thing you can do is like either record yourself or like play in front of a mirror. And you'll just see, like, you know, the awkward position that you might be holding something in. And then it'll be, like, a lot of times I think uh, we have video lessons with people. And then just from the nature of, like, them looking at themselves, they're like, oh, I can already see, like, what I'm causing, what, why this is hard for me or why this is, yeah. you know, yeah, whatever, this yeah. position is weird. So, like, if you kind of just sit in front of a mirror, yeah, you'll probably see something and be like, oh, that doesn't look natural that doesn't look like i'm relaxed while i'm playing mm. that looks like i'm stretching yeah. to try and hit yeah. that or whatever yeah. so and if if you're not sure then send us a video and we can kind of <laughs> there you go and see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. that would be way more helpful i think mm -hmm. if we were able to see yeah that. we can kind of correct it if, if yeah. there's something wrong uh yeah. before we move on niho what is the hawaiian word for elbow oh oh you know what? I can't think of it off the top of my head. Hold on a second. Isn't there a language specialist in, in the room right now? There is. <laughs> is there is. That... <laughs> <laughs> I think Kuli is me. Um, Kahel. She can't hear me. She's outside. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll mute the kind and I'll go ask her. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> Why we're for elbow? <laughs> there, he's asking. <laughs> Uh, we can kind of go to this question though, I think, because yeah, yeah. you can yeah. cover this pretty quickly. Okay. Uh, Rob just asked if you can go over that that like um, pattern that you use for major scales. Uh, you know, the like the zero two zero oh, two yeah, yeah, yeah. zero one three or whatever. Yeah. Okay. So um, in in our series, uh, Soul was this solo Soul Seekers revealed. Um, you know, we we kind of showed <clears throat> the uh, the major scale. With, with these numbers so so uh the the pattern that, that we talked about kind of doing this is going to be um from c e a it's going to be zero two on the c then on the e zero one three on the a zero two three so it's zero two zero one three zero two three and that uh that rings true to any note that you start in and uh, and just kind of adjusting where that zero is going to be. So if I use a bar on two and this becomes the zero, um, that, that C string second fret is a D. So this would be my D scale. If I do this to zero, two, zero, one, three, zero, two, three. So it kind of, uh, it kind of rings true to any, uh, any kind of um, major scale that you want to figure out. So you just have to know what note it is in the C. So if I wanted to do an, an F scale, for example, I know that the C string fifth fret is my F note. So if I use the fifth fret as my zero and just kind of bar it, uh, bar my pointer finger on the zero, if I were to plug in that same, um, that same formula of zero, two, zero, one, three, zero, two, three, you'll get your major scale there as well. We discuss another, uh, another scale um, which is a Mixolydian scale um, in, in Solo Seeks Revealed. So if you guys want to check that out, check out Solo Seeks Revealed, and you can kind of utilize those two, um, we call it, uh, what is it? Blocks, boxes blocks. or islands. Boxes. We all yeah, boxes. Those two boxes. So the box is basically 0, 1, 2, 3 fret, and the other box is the 7, 8, 9, 10. So the Mixolydian scale is here. And you can kind of bridge the two. So you can yeah. kind of go up and down your your uh, your fretboard just by using the two different boxes of scales, which is the regular Ionian scale and then the Mixolydian scale up here in the seven to ten. Yeah, and then Rob asked, "What's the pattern for minor scales?" Um, the minor scale is a little bit is a little bit different. So instead of zero two zero one three zero two three, it's gonna be zero two three. Then it's gonna be one three four. So the pattern um, is a little bit more difficult to uh, to memorize on on the uh, on on the minor scales. So zero two three, 
That's your C minor scale. So you can kind of plug that in anywhere too. So you can go on D is 0, 2, 3, 1, 3, 4, 1, 3. But it's it's tough because it doesn't really um turn into a like a like a like a box because you have that four, so it's like a five fret box. Yeah. Right? Yeah, so can you do you have the answer? <laughs> yeah, ku e ku e lima. Ku e ku e lima. Can you break that down? It was such a long down? one. Ku e ku e <laughs> and lima, so elbow. Oh, ku e ku e is to bend? Yeah, well, depending on uh, the uh, the usage of it, I guess, yeah. Mm, and lima is, of course, your fingers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your which head. is my name. Yeah, that's I had a name with lima in it. My Hawaiian name is actually Mana Lima. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, right. That's a great name. Yeah, you were there when I was given that name. Oh, that's a great name, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mana Lima. It's, uh, great name to have. Nick Castillo has bestowed that name to me. You can't just, you know, you can't just like <laughs> give yourself a Hawaiian name. I feel like you you have to be bestowed it, right? It's so Jamiho. heavy. Yeah. Oh, totally, <laughs> bro. Totally, <laughs> totally. Can I just claim a cool name? Yeah, okay. why not? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that. I'll you. <laughs> I'll offer you. Yeah. If that works, you know, whatever. Yeah. As long as it's Hawaii. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what What are the names that I should stay away from? What do you mean? Like, I mean, are there any like, you know? You mean like I... stereotypical Hawaiian names? <laughs> yes, yes. Please. Oh, Is there any? I don't want to call out anybody in particular, but there's always <laughs> there's always like a Lani, anything with Lani in it, like oh. Le Lani, Na Lani, Ka Lani. Yeah. How about Lama Lani? <laughs> Lama Lani? No, what is it? No, li Lima, like Lima Lani. So Lima, Lima Lani. Lani. Lima. Fing <laughs> Heavenly fingers, bro. Heavenly, Heavenly fingers. finger. Heavenly hand. <laughs> Lima Lani. Uh, you know, he Heavenly hand. Yeah, you could, bro. So for a male, like stay away from the Lani's. Oh, uh, there's a lot of like. You know, especially out here in Hawaii, there's always a lot of Kavikas and Kikoas and a lot of mm -hmm. K names that you're just mm -hmm. like, oh, bro, I know like three of you. <laughs> and I, you know, like Kanihos. And... Ah, Kanihos <laughs> kind of, uh, yeah, that's a original, but that's a last name. So oh. if you want to be like real Hawaiian, aren't, don't you have like a, a Catholic first name like David or John. Yeah, yeah. And then right. you have well, a middle name yeah, that takes up yeah. like wow. the rest of the That's space. Right. <laughs> That's definitely that era, you know? Like, when they write your name on the birth certificate, they go, Oh, we ran out of line. We gotta add another line or we gotta scribble it in. I write it on the back. Yeah, yeah. You guys got them long, long names. <laughs> yeah, no, totally. Totally. That's a Hawaii thing though, I'm sure. Uh -huh. Okay, Kaha, do you have another question for us? Um, uh, Cameron asks, uh, let me try and find, what do you, Cameron asks, what do you think of Larry Robinson's inlays? I don't know if you know about those. Larry Robinson, I don't, but I'm going to Google him right now. <laughs> <laughs> Robinson, I'm guessing I have to put ukulele on it. Larry Robinson ukulele. Uh, what do I think about his inlay? Apparently, Larry <laughs> Robinson by Maya Moen based back here. Okay. Um, well, that's cool. That's very intricate. That's cool. I mean, I, I don't, I'm not a, um, I'm not a luthier or, uh, or any kind of, um, expert on, uh, on inlaying, but it looks, it looks good. It looks clean. It looks, I mean, I don't know what else to say. I mean, it's, it's good. I mean, if it fits, if the shoe fits, you know, as long as it's not uh, nothing that kind of takes away from the ukulele itself, as long as it's it kind of um, highlights the uke and it's not just like, oh, well, that's a really cool inlay, but the uke is okay, but the inlay is, inlay is really cool. You know what I mean? Like you, you, you don't want to take anything away from the main, you know, uh, from the main thing, which is the ukulele is going to be that's that's like the main focus, right? If your uh, if your inlay has like so much stuff on it, but then like you don't really pay attention to the rest of the uke, it's kind of you know it's it's kind of sad. But I I think he does uh, or or she I guess you can, a girl could be Larry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, can you yeah. describe some of like what, uh, what the one that I'm looking at like? right now? 
um, is a uh, there's one with three parrots. Um, it's it's done on a Maya Moe ukulele. Um, mm-hmm. The three parrots. It, it looks you know it's pretty good. It's it's very intricate. You know it's got the colors like super duper bright and stuff. And um, I like how it kind of uses the fret wire. So this is what I'm talking about. Like it uses the fret wires as kind of um, as almost a place where the parrot lies on. You know. So it has oh, like the he has the the sticks kind of inlaid there so that the parrot's on the stick, but he um he put the stick kind of close to the uh, to the fret wire, making it kind of look like the you know the, the parrot's kind of laying on it, which is cool. Oh, cool. Like I like that kind of attention to detail, you know. Um, yeah. And as long as it's not taken away, you know, from uh, from the instrument itself, and it's it's more yeah. just highlighting it. What? I, so does think... he like? Oh. No, go oh, ahead. Does he does he primarily do inlays for other people, or or is it just my boy? I think he does for for other people. I I see. A, uh, I mean, I, I I'm looking at images right now for Larry Robinson, and I see like a Koala and a Martin. Wow. And, you know, like oh, okay. So I think he does stuff for other Custom people. It looks inlay. super duper intricate. Yeah. Wow. And it's just, I mean, he apparently cool. wrote a book on inlay. Like, oh. <laughs> I'm looking right here, like uh, Larry Robinson, the art of inlay. There's a book that you can get right now. So wow. I mean, you know, like. So my, you know, my humble non-expertise opinion is, I think he's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he knows more than he us, knows, so we, yeah. can't, we yeah. can't really comment on it. Right? No, it's it's great. I mean, like he kind of, it, it's pretty intricate. I'm like looking at some of this stuff now, and it's never kind of taken away from the instrument, which is really cool. I appreciate that. Yeah, Sometimes I think it's too much, you know. Yeah, I think sometimes we we've gone to Nam. And you yeah. see like a really nice inlay, and you pick up the instrument. And you're like, "Oh, nice! This is so beautiful." But then when you play it, it's like the instrument is kind of, "Oh, this is so so. It's not a great <laughs> instrument itself." It's okay. <laughs> so that that's what makes it kind of disappointing. But if if he's doing work for like Maya Moya and stuff, like the instrument should be fine too. So yeah, yeah. yeah. I think. Well, uh, well, Martin, I have a Maya question. Moya. Sure. So does inlaying well does inlaying affect the sound at all? Um, some people would say yes, but I I don't think so. I mean, because you're you're still kind of you know um, instead of uh, say say you're getting the inlay on the you know on on the soundboard like that might make a bit of a difference because it's not just like the you know the full just the top you know just the regular top uh, of of your ukulele you're kind of uh, taking a little bit away of a uh, little bit of it away and putting the um, the inlay there instead. But I mean. It only to a person who's really, really good at kind of like <laughs> listening, like would it would really make a difference to you know? So it doesn't really make too much of a difference, I think, you know, in in that sense. But I don't, I don't know. It, but it does take away stuff like um the aesthetic. I hear what you're saying though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it's like kind of too much. Then yes, like, yes, yes, yes. And does it become about the inlay and yes, not about the yes. more? So right. I don't know. When uh when when I designed my ukulele, I, I had like a um uh, I had it in mind that I didn't want the the inlay to kind of take away. I wanted it to to be kind of just stand on its own. And I like I like kind of elegance in, instead of like bam, my name, Guerrero. Yeah, so yeah, don't yeah. forget it, you know. Like, <laughs> so, so that anyone watching me know that it's nominated. Um, you're, exactly. <laughs> I should have Hoku winner, like you know, like on my uh, on my fretboard. It should just be that, just, just make a statement, you know. No, like, um, <laughs> and I opted for like you know uh, ebony, so it's not like like blingy with the like mm. power abalone and you know and stuff. But I I'm I'm not against like stuff like that, you know. I, I do like bling also, but for my own personal instruments, I kind of like to keep it just nice and more elegant than than anything. It's like a like a sharp nice suit that you put on and it's just it just fits it's crisp it's, it's timeless you know yeah because it's like what if 20 years from now i'm like man i shouldn't have put my name on it what was i doing <laughs> you know what i mean like <laughs> you don't you don't like when the ukulele is more inlay than wood <laughs> <laughs> you know what if i have a sudden turn in my life and and you know like what if what if i meet someone and like you know and and what if what if like there's a meteor and it hits like hits hits Heather and I'm like now I'm gonna find somebody and then like you know I remarry to to like a very a very success, successful like you know person 
And I'm like, man, they're so successful. I'm going to take their it's, last name. Or, so, you know what I mean? Like, it's no or, longer Guerrero. It's like, I, I was wondering where this was going. <laughs> I, I couldn't like, tell oh, where this you know? was going for a while. <laughs> so i'm like oh why did i get guerrero my last name is no longer guerrero you know like I, i've made this <laughs> <Stop. to> like, <laughs> you know it's now g yeah <laughs> there you g. go it just it just does so that happens, mean you know, that oh go ahead Kai. Uh, sorry go ahead uh, it just so happens you you marry like uh inlay harris who like <laughs> the, the the person who's gonna inherit like the the best uh. inlay company yeah, or the, whatever in laying fortune my yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. so mary oh, robinson yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so i want that robinson name you know like oh too bad it's guerrero forever you know does yeah. that mean your guerrero signed instruments would be worth more than i uh, maybe that was be- yeah. that was my um what was that this is my maiden yeah. name <laughs> <laughs> it's like before prince became prince yeah yeah yeah, hey. yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right next question guys sorry um uh, yeah so we had kind of like a it's kind of a in-depth question from will and he's been i think he's been asking this question a couple of times but he kind of ha- wants to know a lot so that's why like mm. we've tried to answer it but i don't think we've gotten through all of it but mm. basically he he i think he wants to know uh what how did you start learning to solo and what yeah. do you think about when you solo? Like, what do you think about when you're playing a solo? And yeah. what are you trying to achieve? And stuff like, what is the mindset that you're in? You know? Yeah. Will Will sent a um, a video like asking questions and stuff. There's a lot of questions, but I think mm-hmm. we can kind of sum it up to just uh, just that. And he, I mean, it was it was a lengthy video, and he was talking about like kind of like the feeling described this, and how you just know when it clicked and stuff. So basically. Um, I was, I don't know, like I, I, I was one of those kids who just kind of like, who just played, uh, who just played instruments and played the solo and stuff. And I'm like, well, do I have to play that solo? Like, can I, can I just like put something else in there? And, um, one in particular, a song in particular is, is on fire. Like, you know, it's a full, like picking song and it's like four minutes of just these same <laughs> chords. And, and in that, in that song, I found it kind of super repetitive because it's just like that especially the a minor part would just go i mean with all respect yeah. to uh, you know to Troy fernandez like um that like that is his main melody he wants to kind of you know reiterate that that that's the main melody and that's going to be what's carrying the whole song and stuff but as a kid you know i was a, was a punk kid <laughs> like i was, was kind of you know like yeah, what if what if I don't want to play that though? You know, like what if what if like I want to do something more exciting than that? Like what if I want to show people my skills, my sweet sweet skills? You know, like people can't see my sweet sweet skills with just oh, no. it's true. right. You know what I mean? It's true. So, and then I kind of just like started going off the beaten path and just started to play. And I'm like, man, this you know this is this is mine. This is not like Troy Fernandez's uh, you know solo or even his song at that point. It's become like my own kind of personal you know uh way to kind of play it and i looked at a lot of um you know a lot of singers in the past like i'm, I'm not like a great singer but i always looked up to like good singers and uh, and they would kind of you know like take a song that they're singing and they would kind of do it as you know a, their own way and i was always kind of a fan of that and i'm like why couldn't i do that with my ukulele so i did the same you know tried to do the same thing and i'm like why don't i just do the whole thing like kind of my own way like and that's when i discovered like okay well that's that note sounds good this note sounds good um so what else sounds good and i just kind of compiled it, it wasn't like even a knowledge of scales or anything like that it was purely just by ear that like this note sounds good that note sounds good these notes sound great in this song and when it gets to the a minor part this note sounds good when it gets to the c part these notes sound good and just kind of like just just the fact of uh of wanting to go off that you know to that beaten um that beaten path and following that like wherever it kind of takes me because i can always go back and play you know play it normally like i get it it's not like i I lost the path i know where that path is i can always go to that but it was it was tough because um and this is gonna involve uh, Kaneo in, in a little bit but like um i used to be uh, like on, on a school bus you know like playing with my friend aaron uh suarez you know i gotta give a shout oh, out to aaron suarez. Aaron. yes aaron suarez 
um he would kind of back me up in the uh in, in the bus and it's like 6 30 in the morning and people like barely just got up and there's a kid in the front like playing on fire not like on fire you know like i was playing it like my own way and then kids in the back were just please just play it correctly can you just play it correctly <laughs> and like people just didn't like it you know but i was like you know what whatever like i'm, I'm kind of doing my thing people were already mean to me anyway so like what is the Aww. difference like if uh if they you know if they were mean to me then or before or even after that so i'm like you know i'm just gonna do my thing they're gonna <coughs> excuse me they're gonna be mean regardless of so just just do what i like to do so that's kind of when when things all <clears throat> all kind of clicked because uh i i now realize that I have the power to make my own music. And that's when I just started to try more and like, okay, well, what if I do this? Or what if I do that? And then that's when like, oh, these are all just scales. And that's when like my, uh, my band knowledge and music knowledge from band kind of come, uh, came in, like my knowledge of like uh, clarinet and saxophone, like, oh, I can play these notes just like I do on my saxophone. Like that works good. Like, that sounds really good. And um, <clears throat> yeah, that was kind of the, the moment that it clicked. But, Kanijo was actually in that bus, just as irritated as everybody else. Right? But, uh, actually, I remember that day, you guys. It's a true story, <laughs> first of all. And I remember, I remember, because he was really, really, really excited, and he was like, "Bro, check this out!" <laughs> and so we started. I started watching him play on fire, and then he started going off on a solo, and I was thinking to myself, like. This is not a, This is not on fire, though. <laughs> like, but I didn't understand that he had reached that epiphany. You know, like now I do. But back then, I was just like, it doesn't sound like on fire. Therefore, it's not on fire. But mm -hmm. if I could have understood the, you know, where he had gotten to, I think would have been. I could have shared that same like excitement with him. But he was so excited. You guys have no idea. Like, and I'm over there sitting there, like, oh, this. What are you playing? Like I, I just this doesn't sound like on fire to me. <laughs> That's not the song. <laughs> Why but, are you doing that? But I honestly can say I was there uh, at least for that moment when he uh, just discovered how to solo. I remember. Yeah, we were totally it's super early in the morning on the bus. I remember. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Eric Suarez and I, and um, and I I tell the story a lot uh, of like how I just kind of lock myself up in my room and just kind of put on these records and oh, stuff. And so just true. Kind of, like so, Kanio actually is one of those guys who would wait for me like outside my house until I was done. So, I would roll up on my bike every day and like. I would hear him practicing along, whether it was like at that time was more um, uh, Kao Crater Boys. That was what was popular. I remember even when Pure Heart first came out and he got a hold of that. It was just ridiculous. I mean, I mean, I love music, but Brotherhood was just <laughs> obsessed, man. I, it was incredible. The the, the drive that I, I witnessed, you know, growing up next to you, Beth. So, you know, it was good. It inspired me, too. So. I, yeah. I, yeah, I think I mean uh, huh? uh, I, I think Will wanted to know too like how did you even get started going from like maybe strumming chords doing really mm -hmm. basic stuff to like doing the pickings that are in these songs like how did you figure out how to go from that to that you know like the string I mean, picking not just soloing or not soloing. right 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 like the picking stuff I mean uh, I, I can't really take credit for that. That's like like a bunch of the kids at school already kind of knew like the picking patterns for some of the songs, and you know you would ask them like, "Hey, uh, how do you how do you play the picking pattern to that?" And then uh, they'd, they'd either show you or they'd just like walk away playing the thing, you know, like and um, and not show you. So there were some there were some people like who were who were nice about it and and kind of like you know helped you you know help you kind of learn the song, and that's that's how it is for for a lot of people growing up in Hawaii. Yeah. So picking was kind of the uh, the the next step into into playing ukulele. Everyone would just kind of strum and stuff and when you decided like okay, I want to try my hand at like at, at picking. So um you would ask someone, "Oh, do you know the picking for this song?" So you learn that song, you would just be obsessed with it and stuff. And then uh yeah, that's that's kind of how picking happened for me. <laughs> yeah. I I think that's like uh something that naturally happens in Hawaii. Yeah. And, and especially, yeah, especially in that time period, like the way that Will asked too, he's like saying like, but did you guys have like tabs? Like, did you guys have resources for this? And it's like, no, we really, it no. really was like uh, word to word or person to person. It, that we learned it was. Kind of stuff. Yeah. And I yeah, think that's true. That in a way that 
kind of it makes it so we learn like maybe less technical things or like oh this is the exact note or whatever but i think we learn more naturally that way too you know like we learn is like oh well i, I might not not know the the song a hundred percent but i know mm-hmm. that this d note can be played here and here and here you know or whatever yeah. it's like you get less locked into formality almost yeah, yeah, it was all almost like like it, 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 whenever you learn a new you know a new picking or even like a new like uh, riff and stuff, it was all, it was like Christmas morning you know like you would just be obsessed with it and you'd be like all day you can't it, I can't even put like you know put that feeling into a word like how how that feels to like kind of like oh, I finally figured it out or I finally learned it like somebody finally taught it to me like that that is kind of the um the um the feeling that we wanted to give everybody everyone else like with ukulele underground like we wanted to you know to uh, to give everyone that same feeling of like this is how you play that you know that song or that picking that you've you know that you listen to to your favorite song or whatever we wanted to give everyone that like that feeling of, uh, of finally being able to produce it yourself or playing it yourself you know it's really 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 cool yeah and, and like uh so what now is like now that you're so proficient at it like, what do you think about when you attempt like a solo or you attempt picking and stuff? Like, what are you, what's going through your head? What's going on in my head is like, what what key is the song in? And that's like honestly the first thing and the only thing that like that I think about. And everything else is a matter of self expression, like the kind of notes that you choose, the, like how you get from one note to another, like and uh, and even just the series of notes. Like, is it? You know, is it making a statement? Is it telling a story? Is it is there a melody line that you're you know that you're sticking to? There's all sorts of things that that go in my head, but most importantly is what key is this in? You know, um, and from there it's like okay, so I know it's in C, so I have seven lovely dudes, you know, like uh, notes <laughs> to uh to kind of pick from, and you know, and everything in between. You know what I mean? So not instead of like seven, I have eleven notes to kind of choose from. So I can choose from these eleven notes, and uh, and depending on how I feel that day, is uh, is going to contribute on what um, what those notes are gonna are gonna say. So like uh, personal um, uh, expression, like it is is a big part of it because you know like if I want to just do like a s- straight up whatever solo, if I didn't care about it, you'd hear a lot more. You know, a lot more just like mm, just see, scales. But if I want to like pour out emotion to it, I'm gonna like uh, maybe this part feels a little bit more like I, I want to, you know, I want to squeeze that. No, I want to squeeze that note. So maybe I'll I'll bend it or something, or or I'll slide it if I'm feeling kind of lazy. Then you know, a lot more slides, a lot more hammer-ons and stuff. But it's just a matter of it's a matter of self-expression. You know, if uh, if somebody were to tell you like put on some music right and everyone knows how to dance it's like oh just dance to this you're not gonna be like well what's the dance moves you know like there is no move (laughs) just go out there just dance move your body however you feel like moving your body and that's gonna depend on your own like kind of person you know how you feel personally like if you feel like flailing your arms you're gonna flail your arms if you feel like you're gonna move your legs you're gonna move your legs that's how it's gonna be yeah yes so would would you uh you know because i'm fairly new to the whole soloing thing too but would you encourage I mean, because if if we know a scale, then how do we find things that we like? Like you just mess around until you hear. Yeah, something? it's just a matter of, of of doing and stuff. I mean, like, uh, it, it's it, soloing and and playing music in general is kind of like learning a language. You know, we always kind of tell people that that like, you know, your scales and stuff. It's kind of like your your vocabulary that that you use to speak this you know speak this language. So the mm. more that you you know. You speak, the more you practice that language, the more proficient you are, and you know, at it. So, the the more you you know you ex- expose yourself to those you know those vocabulary words, um, the more you're gonna be able to use it. Because like, if you're just kind of throwing out a word there that you don't really know, then uh, then that's that that's kind of the same thing as kind of like playing a technique or playing a line that you don't really know. It might not fit. It might fit there. You know, you're just kind of throwing it out there. But um, if if you speak if you speak more if you practice more on uh on on that language the more proficient you are at it the more you can kind of craft like better sentences so the more you can craft better solos in, in that you know in that sense so uh at first you might just learn just you know just the basics like i said just the seven notes on do re mi fa sol la ti you know and uh but 
there's all those notes in between. So there's definitely, you know, like more languages, uh, more of the language that, that you've learned to, uh, to, to explore. And that's when, you know, you can use those for self-expression. You know what I mean? Like saying, what's up? is you know is like is is a slang it's it's not really like that the language won't tell you like oh this is how you whatever you know it's more like what is up you know or like it or how are you or hello or even you know like so you're using your own kind of uh vocabulary words and your own choices to say what's up some people say what's up like with a z or whatever you know like just being more right, self-expressive right. kind of that's that's how i um I, how i approach uh, approach soloing I like I like the advice you give to people where you tell them to focus on like one or two notes at first, like huh. and then really get those down and then build it to three notes and build it to four. Mm -hmm. Because I think when people get like even when people just try to solo within the scale, you can hear that that's what they're thinking about staying to. They're like, I gotta use all seven notes and I gotta go through all yeah. of them up and you down. Don't gotta use all of it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I think when you when you do limit yourself to one or two notes. Mm -hmm. it, like it really is like you're a baby and you're just like babbling at first right you're just going ba 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 but then you really build up your your feeling of like oh that that turns into a word which turns into yeah. a sentence which turns into more so even that like don't you don't have to think about oh, i need to run through everything that i know i know all these different skills i know the whole neck up and down like if you limit it to just like one or two notes, it'll probably yeah. sound more musical than you just trying to throw everything in at once. Yeah, because if you're like only yeah, if you're only comfortable with you know with with uh, so little words, and you, you can um, you can get a point across with just yeah, a little bit of words. You know, so if you only know like if you know the scale, for example, you don't even have to use the whole scale. You can just use the one note and come off with a solo just with the one note. You know, like if you're good with that, then you're good with that. You can add another, you can add another mm -hmm. note. So you can do, um, so if, if you're doing C, like a simple rhythm like that, you can do, you can either follow it with just the one note or go off, you know, a little bit on your own and just do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's just that one note. And then like add, you know, add another one to that. Then, then it gets even more, you know, more complicated. And then adding, um, uh, adding some technique to those two notes. So, <laughs> and that's just two notes. You know what I mean? Like, imagine what you can do with eleven. You know, like different notes, right? So, uh language is, is the same thing now that you know that now that i have a, I have a kid of my own like she can tell me what she wants with very few words and i understand you know like that that point kind of comes across but as she learns more as she practices you know like her uh you know her her speech and her language like the more you know the um the more words that she can say she can be elaborate with what she wants but she, it's still the same the same kind of point right like yeah she can she can tell me she wants milk but then like you know later on she'd be like like father i would like some <laughs> some almond milk in a oh. tall glass please you know like <laughs> I, I think talking about like uh soloing within the scale too yeah. like when you hear somebody who does that it sounds like it's like the analogy i like to think of it's like somebody mm. who's painting by numbers right like mm. they, it's all segmented and it fits and then it turns out like oh it's pretty nice but you can tell that it they're following a very set like yeah. pattern and yeah. everything but if you just yeah. solo with one or two notes, it's like a little kid that you hand with, like, you know, it's like, oh, you only have brown and blue paint, you know, and the whole yeah. canvas might turn brown. But <laughs> that is such like a expression of their creativity that I think that mm. speaks more to them, you know, so both ways are fine. And eventually you want to get to the point where it's like you're the artist and you have mm. the broad canvas. And like you said, it's like you just worry about what key it is right and that's right. where it's like yeah you you're painting broad strokes you're not doing yeah you, then you fill in the details and stuff. asking asking what key is kind of like what are we what are we speaking are we speaking english in tagalog we're speaking what like yeah. okay and now that i know that that's the language i speak that language so go go you know go do that language yeah, yeah. we we have a common dialect that. right like that yeah we can exactly throw yeah. back and forth yeah yeah, yeah. so that 
Because it's it's kind of like <laughs> if these people are speaking English and you're speaking in Tagalog, it's oh, not. You know what I mean? It's the same thing. So yeah. what are modes then in all of this? That's a type. It's a part of the language, right? It's but... it's speaking with an accent. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's the best. Speaking with an accent, I'll take it. Yeah. Yeah, it's still the same language. You're still speaking English, but you're just yeah from you the know, south, you're, right? You're right. just from somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, got it. <laughs> Starting yeah. from D, going to yeah. D, but no sharps or flats. You know? <laughs> yeah, right. That's awesome. <laughs> I, I think too, like Will is asking these things because he's trying to think. You know, like oh, should I think about scales? But the problem is, like, when you think about scales while you're soloing. It's like almost it's too much information to think about and mm. it's going to translate too slowly to your fingers. Like you need your fingers to be faster than that. So that's why if you think about the broader idea of just like, oh, it's a key or, oh, it's this sound that I'm trying to go for. It's like yeah. less to worry about, really. It's yeah. easier. Like it opens it up. Yeah. So as far as soloing goes and stuff, like I kind of know what you know what what I'm doing as as a soloist, uh, can you? So this is kind of where you come in as a, as a person who plays bass or guitar uh, for for me or for a bunch of other people. What are some things? Are there any rules that you think about while someone's doing uh, doing a solo? Do you like uh, try to compliment it? Do you hang back? You know, like what do you do personally? Because you've backed up some of the greats. <laughs> um, I think. Like you guys are touching upon, it's it's case by case, right? Like, you know, some people, uh, if you know them, if you know them like how I know you, then it's easier, like, because I know what you like, right? Mm -hmm. So I know how to, like, even for Aaron, we know what you're going for. So it's easier for us because you're coloring with the ukulele, like, we can just hang back and have uh, more accents on percussive or, you know, whatever it is to fill in that without taking away from the ukulele, whereas, like, you know some other guys they're not really uh lead uh how do you say that like their lead isn't as strong as you know so that's where i would have to play like a fatter lead uh stronger lead if if you will but more more like picking more like what a pick instead mm -hmm. of just like uh you know less percussive just more driving mm -hmm. but it's all case by case i i definitely you know, spend some time if you have, if you're on the fly, if it's on the fly, like you're just like, hey, let's jam. Less is more for mm, sure. Yeah, Less is nice. more, yeah. you know? Yeah. So like when you're, um, when you're backing up an ukulele player, are there like certain, uh, like, so, so if you have your guitar with you right now. Um, I do. What are some of like, you know, more uh, common lines that you would play as opposed to something that you wouldn't do? Like, if I'm uh, playing, what, yeah. If you're if you're backing up a new player or you're backing up anyone, really, like what what is the line that you play? Bass or guitar? Bass, bass. Oh, bass, bass. Okay. Yeah, if you're playing bass, what would something that you you normally play versus something that you would you uh so play the thing that you do normally and play play me something that you would hold back. Like what okay. what are some what is the difference between you see. holding back? So I want to hear the difference of less is more, right? Okay, well, if we're just playing out in the song, well, I'm going to use my guitar, so forgive if... Can you hear that? Yeah. So, like, an example is Frank does... When I play with Frank, he does... Uh, someday, right? So it's just got this basic, like... Right? You just got to hold that in your head. And so I'll be like... You know, that'd be something like... Yeah normally but when he's soloing i just basically go you know mm. it's still got like it's still trying to follow that same the yeah. same uh cadence as what i was yeah. playing originally but mm. less so yeah. that there's more space for him to do his solo mm. so it sounds like a solo and less of two guys fighting each other for the mm -hmm. you know what yeah. i mean yeah yeah, yeah. That's, that's kind of what i'm thinking of yeah, a lot of a lot of the time when two, especially when two ukulele players kind of jam and stuff, that gets lost. The less is more, like gets lost, you know. And somebody got to be the try, Indian, yeah. Bro, you know? you got to try to get somebody their own in there, you know. <laughs> we and all want to shine, you know. Exactly. We all want to shine, but like I, you know, going back yeah. to that same punk kid, you know, like that uh, <laughs> that I grew up <laughs> when when I was growing up was that punk kid, and I met Jake for the first time, and the same thing, you know, like uh, I'm I'm playing with him, and he's 
he's doing the less is more. He's kind of hand, hanging back to let me try to, you know, let the young kid do his thing. But like, you know, give him a mouse a cookie. And I just took yeah. the whole, like, <laughs> you know? But you want to show you, though. But that's exactly. Game, bro. So that's I, I, I get it. And as as uh, as I matured as a musician and stuff, like, I, I kind of learned to, like, hang back more. And the less is more really is great advice. So thank you. Yeah, nah, but you kill it, bro. Yeah, now, but <laughs> like, yeah, talk to me like 20 years ago. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I think if you're, you're you, anytime you're like a ukulele player or guitar player or something and you're jamming with somebody and then as like a younger musician, you always try to, I'm going to impress them by throwing in all these yeah. notes. <laughs> and, I'm going to show the, all my magic. Yeah, the, the kind of the sombering moment is when somebody slays you with like four notes or like three notes and they, ki- exactly. they do so much better. And it's like, exactly. oh. it's like it kind of, it, yeah, it's a realization that it's like, ah, oh, that I was yeah. just trying to, you know, do who's the taller kind of competition right, thing. Right. And, you know, I could have just sometimes it works better. though. You know what I mean? Sometimes the, like, you know, if you're, if you're looking to slay somebody, like how <laughs> <laughs> sometimes more will slay. Like for example, me, Clay, and, uh, and, and oh. Abe Lagrimis, me, Clay, and Abe were like soloing out and stuff. And then Abe's like, I'm gonna speak Arabic to all of you guys. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so we gotta clean doing... that up. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it on uh, Facebook, I think. Okay, great, soon. great. Because I, I kind of cut it. Yeah. We got slayed. Like, you know, we were doing the whole, like, okay, cool. Everyone's kind of doing their thing. Less is more, like, wow, whatever. And then, bam, here comes Abe with his, like, Arabic solos and we're just like oh, more, is more. Yeah. more is more <laughs> more is more you want to slay guys I guess you know but if I thought it was just like a friendly jam between us three but you know oh, apparently he was out for Zerta's blood dominance. man <laughs> <laughs> Xerxes came out and just like this is Sparta but but that's also the thing too is that Abe did that <laughs> in like a really refined way right he yeah. just did, he didn't just throw it in either so that takes training i was too. busting his chops yeah. but um let's before uh, before we move on we, we got to do the, the unboxing yeah. promise and unboxing so we'll, we'll we'll do that now i i took a look at it just just to screen it so there's no like any kind of inappropriate stuff <laughs> and then we're gonna we're gonna show um uh talk talk a little bit can you while while i go grab the thing <laughs> oh okay sure yeah uh, what you guys, guys want to know about? Questions. Are there any audience questions for Kaniho? <laughs> I'm uh, I'm currently sitting underneath uh, this bridge in Luke Road <laughs> up in Wailua. <laughs> uh, it's a nice day outside though. You see, the there's children in the background. Uh, there's no questions, but like, uh, what was the first ukulele song that you learned, Kaniho? Oh my gosh, uh, I was. You guys really want to hear this story? I was eighth grade. I was sitting in the back of my uh, auntie's truck. And um, I don't know if you guys remember who Baba B is. Baba B. Yeah? yeah. Baba B. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Big he, boy uh, love Baba B. That's the one. Bro. <laughs> and um, are you ready to unbox or you want me to finish oh, this story? Start. Start. Yeah. Anyway, I was sitting in the back of the bed and then uh, Big Boy, not Big Boy in Love, the other one. Uh, when I was a little boy. He's going to be like you. <laughs> That's the one. Yeah. I heard the solo on that thing. And I looked at all my family and I was just blown away. I was like, what is this? And how can I do it? You know? And so that's that was the Baba B was my first, man. I learned like all of his first album. It was great. That's cool. Yeah. All right. So this is from uh, Ron McGrath. So Ron, um, I believe, was one of the people that uh, that, that came to our retreat, or Ukulele Underground retreat. So he sent us some goodies. He's from Boulder, Colorado. So right off the bat, we got this bag, this smaller bag that has these awesome Boulder, Colorado hats in it. So that's really cool. There's four hats, one for me, Aaron, Kahai, and Ryan, I'm guessing. That's really cool. So I'm going to give these to the rest of the guys. Um, There are some awesome colorado playing cards that like that came in kahai so this one i think is like the coolest that, that i've seen there this awesome you don't think colorado one you don't think uh aaron and ryan would want those not that one <laughs> <laughs> that was that was the ugliest i mean i mean oh. it's, it's the junkest yeah, okay was, okay it's it's not even worth i don't even want to bring it to the office it's so it's so ugly you know but, but thank, you, thank you, Ron. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Ron, for this awesome. But yeah, fun fact: 
Niho G from Colorado. Oh, I spent some time there. I spent some time there. Yeah, yeah. he's from Colorado. Colorado Springs. Colorado Springs. Yeah, yeah. Colorado Springs. Where did you go to college, it. Aaron? Fort Collins. Fort Collins. <laughs> <laughs> so, is that close to Colorado Springs? I have no, no. idea, is it? Oh, no. okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, um, got that and um, got us some stickers. So, this is really cool. Some Colorado brewery stickers. Nice. Yeah. Some nice. brewed locally. Yeah. This is awesome. So he gave us four of those too, one one for one for each. Of oh, us. awesome! Um, so um, we want to say two to the underground. Also gave us some uh, malt vinegar and sea salt Boulder Canyon chips. I can't <laughs> wait to nice. try this. My wife was already like eyeing this out, specifically the malt vinegar one. So there's two malt vinegars. There's one avocado oil, you know, for nice. for more health conscious people. <laughs> <laughs> and we got classic sea salt, classic sea salt, avocado oil, and um, and vinegar and sea salt. So that's thank you so much, Ron. I'm gonna read your um your letter right now. I'm gonna put this here on the side. Uh, so, bam! I haven't read this yet, so this is going to be the first time seeing this. Thank you. <laughs> nice. Uh, oh. Underground, a small token of appreciation for all of you and your families and friends uh, did for us at the retreat. Shelter in place really uh, makes you reflect, and I am so grateful for all you have done for me as an ukulele player. Kauai has always been our favorite place, and now even more so after spending a few days with you guys. We hope you and your families are well. Mahalo, Ron and Colleen McGrath. You are out of this world. Awesome. Thank Mm -hmm. you so much. Mahalo. Yeah. We we have a, like a, a few people in the chat who were at the retreat too, mm-hmm. and yeah. earlier they were just all uh, like saying how how nice it was to meet Kaniho and how fun it oh, was yeah, to meet with him. Right. So. Stop it! Stop it! <laughs> that's right. They got to kind of hang out with you for a bit. All you folks that are still here, thank you for that opportunity. We it was amazing. You know, it's I feel blessed to to be even you know asked for one so. But just to meet all of you, and you guys were so so awesome and so nice and easy to just talk and be around. So I enjoyed it. Thank you. Yeah, there was a lot of like uh, great questions that people were asking oh, yeah. you and stuff. It was it was Super. awesome because um, you know I I know you and Kahe and and I know you guys kind of know your stuff as far as culture and, and language goes. But it was really cool to kind of you know see other people experience that too because I've kind of experienced it. And you're like my best kept secret, you know, like I'll uh, keep these guys just in my pocket, like just like, whatever I need stuff, you know. Like thanks, so kind of like, getting to share you guys with you know with with, with the world and with with the ukulele on the ground has been really really cool. And I'm like. So uh, we're gonna try to get more guests here on Thursday Live Lesson, and it was just one of those things. Like I, I, I need Kanio as gonna as one of our first guests Nick, to, uh, on this thing. I love uh, you, Beth. Since yeah, it's man. going to be the social distancing thing, we're gonna try to bring in more and more guests. So first of which is Kanio. So thank you very much, everyone. Give a nice round of applause. Ah, yes, stop it. Thank you. <laughs> Keep it going for all you guys over there. <laughs> Ukulele underground, follow, man. You follow. guys follow, follow, follow. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, before we go, uh, tell us where people can find you, where people can follow you, and uh, and all that stuff. Can uh, follow can, me? Can they find you? Can they can they find you online? Any any, any kind of social media? <laughs> they, can they see you play bass? <laughs> you talk about these lives that you do with people now. So. <laughs> uh, if anybody's interested, yeah, you can follow me. Sure, yeah, I uh, tag me at the Niho. That's Instagram. That's the only one. <laughs> the Niho. No no the spaces. Niho. No. Okay, Regular the N I H O. Yeah. And then um I haven't been I've been to keep myself busy as a bass player. Um I basically have been finding people who are playing live and then doing like a double phone trick to fix the latency issue and then just play along with them. So whoever tunes in will be hearing their live plus me. But it's just a way to practice since we can't go out and, you know, I don't want to impose because I don't have to ask their permission. I can just, <laughs> I can just do I can it, do you it. know. Jam yeah. mono neon. <laughs> yeah, exactly, you know, you know, just without his permission. But yeah, yeah, just to keep busy as, as a way to play along with folks. So, I mean, definitely, if you guys want to follow, please, please do. But no worries. It's just me and my family on that. So mm. Okay, yeah, so yeah. I ask... I ask everyone this: Since you are also an, an ukulele player, do you have any advice 
for uh for all the ukulele players out there. <laughs> Don't be best friends with Aldrin Guerrero. He no longer um, plays ukulele. Thanks oh, to me. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> I don't know your player because no, Aldrin no. is the man. No, um, <laughs> you know, honestly, the best advice is just to keep going. You know, keep going. And if uh, you you know, it's all good to do scales and everything, and that's great. But but also just remember to keep the you know, the passion. You know, try not to forget the passion. You know, what what made you want to play an instrument? You can get lost in the technicality of things, but if you can hold on to the passion part of it, that's my son. Um, you'll be good. <laughs> son, you're gonna drown. You don't have your floaty on. <laughs> <laughs> that's an added tip. Added tip. <laughs> I thought you were just like kind of posing as a troll under the bridge. You know? Yeah, that's me ah. for today. I need to make some money. <laughs> I'll let we you don't guys get no pass. tolls. We don't get no rolls. You can pass me if you can answer these riddles three. <laughs> oh, All right. Well, thank you so much, Neo, for spending some time with us and uh, and sharing your knowledge with the, with the ukulele on the ground. Big ups, man. Thank you. I love you guys. Love. Bro respect <laughs> to all the ukulele community that's tuning in so yeah love to blessings to all of you as well man thanks for tuning in keeping my friends you know busy i really appreciate it too you know so thanks you guys and thanks to uh thanks to everyone listening uh via the podcast or if you guys are watching this via the, the video cast if you guys are just listening in as a podcast because we want to watch this uh we do have this available over at uh i guess at ukulele underground or um yeah so and if you guys are watching this and want to just kind of you know uh, listen to it later on or uh or if you want to listen to it instead on your commute or whatever but i mean i don't know if people are commuting nowadays but if you do have a long commute you can listen to it <laughs> over uh just follow our rss feed you know and uh, and download as a podcast um if you guys want to learn how to play ukulele check out ukulele on the ground dot com and sign up for uu plus to take your ukulele playing to the next level we have private lessons there we have um improvement systems we have songs that you can learn we have techniques that you can learn it's basically anything that you'd ever want in ukulele instructions over at ukuleleontheground.com. Now, uh, stick around for one-on-one coaching. And tomorrow, we have a Lower Friday Live Jam and a bunch of uh, private lessons. So, we'll see you guys then. Aloha.